The college baseball experience on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's used that's US based and available in 40 states. Head over to cut.com, that's K U T T.com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick them for a chance to win 100x in NBA, MLB, NHL, college basketball, and more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN. Sorry, promo code TC SGPN. Sorry about that. Um, and get a 100% deposit match. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. What's going on, everybody? It's Noah Beanick, aka 77, and I'm back here with a Friday preview of the, of the college baseball slate. Man, I cannot talk tonight. Uh, I'm coming at you late, 4 a.m. Eastern time, uh, after all of the Sweet 16 action, the Frozen Four action, and also the Thursday game ones in college baseball. And then, first of all, happy opening day to those that celebrate uh, the MLB wise. Um, it, it just I, yes, we typically like to do the show before game ones and weekend series. However, it didn't really make a ton of sense when there was sweet six, like I said, sweet 16, frozen four kicking off, also opening day. So it felt like a lot of the baseball fans that would be listening to baseball podcasts would be listening to MLB opening day stuff with all the hype around it. Um, and plus, our traditional upload day is Friday um, for all the podcast listeners. Um, and also, we skipped last week. I was in Vegas for March Madness. Plenty of fun. Um, that has now been the second year that I've done that. Also the third year in a row that I've skipped uh, that week. But I- I'm back to deliver college baseball pods from this weekend on out. Um, and we'll probably pick it up to at least two maybe even three pods a week here with this feed. Uh, the college experience is really rolling. Um, and the attention around this college baseball gambling show has really increased as well. And I appreciate that. Um, but like I said, just, uh, it made more sense to do a Friday show here and I'm by myself. I figured let's hammer this out when the opening odds come out late at night. Um, and I, I didn't need anybody to go because I want this thing to be quick. Yes. The excitement is still there about MLB and also it's good Friday. Happy to happy. Good Friday to those that celebrate happy thanks or wow. I was about to say Thanksgiving weekend, happy Easter weekend, um, to all those who celebrate as well. Um, so yeah, I, I just want a short pod here. Um, and before we get started, I want to plug the MLB Gambling Podcast. It's part of the SGPN um, network. Uh, they do great stuff. I was formerly a part of that pod, um, and they cover – I mean, I don't know if they're going to do it this year, but they were covering every baseball game of every day, uh, every midweek day um, for an entire year. Uh, they did it two years ago when I was on the show. They did it last year when I was part of the show. <clears throat> I don't know if their uh, target – for their model has changed. However, I know that they're much like the college experience where they will cover every game that is offered. Um, And that's what I'm planning on doing here today. And if you're a college basketball fan, of course, uh, both the sports gambling podcast and the college basketball experience are covering March madness. Check those out uh, either for Friday's action in the sweet 16 or the elite eight, Uh, the college basketball experience will have their elite eight show uh, Friday night. And I assume sports gambling podcast will put something out too. Um, but yeah, let's jump into the games. I have the pitcher listings for uh, every game here that's listed. I'm going to go a little. So one one more thing. I did not watch a ton of action from last week, of course. I was in Vegas. I was getting shit hammered watching college basketball. Um, so most of my handicapping, at least, comes from stats. But it's also like I'll go fish out stats for the listeners. But I like to watch the games and judge teams based on my eyes. And I did not watch much action at all last week. So I feel a little bit naked going into the week. Yesterday, Friday, or yesterday, Thursday, I only bet two 
two games. I went one and one, lost a little bit on the Clemson money line. They were minus 150 walk off home run by Miami. So again, uh, it was it was a low risk, low reward day. <clears throat> Today, I'm gonna open it up a little bit with the show. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I, I've seen I've caught up a little bit on the last weekend's action. I saw some of these teams play Thursday. And we got some game one handicaps for uh, the series that didn't start Thursday for you here. Um, game one, we're going off of DraftKings opening lines here. Uh, again, 4 a.m., maybe not so much opener, uh, but they're pretty close to it. And if there's been any movement, it's only been about 10, 20 cents max. Uh, most of your movement's going to come tomorrow morning. 4 p.m. Eastern time. Pitt at Virginia Tech here. I think Virginia Tech is a valid parlay piece. They're minus 315 uh, against Pitt, plus 230. Um, I'm going to write this down in my notebook here. That way I can come back to it and maybe put together a parlay at the end of the show. Um, but fading Pitt's team 662, team ERA, um, and also Jack Sokol, who, I mean, I went to college in the Pitt area. I faced Sokol. Um you know, I mean, he's a D1 pitcher, but again, he's never really had any success in the ACC, and he's a senior. So I think it's a great fade. Virginia Tech, explosive offense. We move. Sam Houston at Liberty. Um, this one was an interesting game, uh, game one Thursday. Um, I think it's once again another coin flip game between the two squads here. Uh, Sam Houston, minus 150. Liberty, plus 120 here. Um for Sam Houston, Gabby Calderon is starting here. And it's much like Cold Stone. However, it's Cold Iron. That's how you spell it here. He's a senior lefty, 2-1 and one on the year, 334 ERA, 20 strikeouts, 5 walks, and 29.2 innings. He's got a 602 FIP. Um, and then going for Liberty is Cole Hertzler. He's a junior right-hander. He's 2-3 and three on the year, 408 ERA, 32 strikeouts, 7 walks in 28.2 innings with a 451 uh, FIP and a 292 Sierra. So he's actually been pretty good. Liberty's been a little bit underwhelming. However, they're better at home. Bearcats, they kind of look like they're struggling when they hit the road uh, below 500 there. So Liberty, the the Flames, the Flaming Libs, as Col uh, Colby calls them, I mean, they're catching plus money here. Uh, they already won game one of the series. They're going for the series win. Give me the Flames at plus money. Um, I don't think I'm going to bet that. Like I said, I think it's more of a coin flip game than anything, but I think that's your best look in this game. Um, now we move to 6 Eastern. North Carolina at Wake Forest. The Tar Heels are plus 170 on the money line. Wake Forest is minus 220. Uh, the big notable news here is this is game one. This is Friday. Chase Burns has jumped Josh Hartle in the starting rotation for uh, Wake Forest. Uh, the Demon Deacons um, have not looked as great as you know last year. Uh, they lost their first two ACC series. Um, but a freshman lefty coming to the couch seems like it should be the right medicine they need. Uh, Folger Boaz, I'm talking about for UNC. He's got a 466 ERA. Burns has been dominant with a sub two. Uh, Wake Forest, if you were to put it into a parlay, I would not uh, stop you. However, this is this is the day that I would back Wake. However, I have been a little bit hesitant with the Deeks this year. Um, I know that they're getting Nick Kurtz back. I know they're getting Merrick Houston back. Two big additions. Houston definitely on the defensive side of the ball. Um, he's a solid shortstop. Same with Seaver King who had filled in that shortstop. But now you can move Seaver King back to center field and you got a plus defensive shortstop in Merrick Houston there. And Kurtz, he struggled for expectation like compared to his expectation early on in the year uh, then he got hurt uh shoulder injury he's now coming back i think he's dhing for this series here and then next week he's going to be playing first base um but yeah just I i'm gonna hold off uh with wake here um also another another uh parlay or bust play here louisville against florida state uh, the cards are plus 200, FSU minus 270 here. Um, starting for the cards is a fifth-year senior, Evan Webster. He's 2-1 with a 240 AD, right? 26 strikeouts, 7 walks in 29 innings with a 347 Sierra. Uh, however, he's going up against the buzzsaw for Florida State. That is Jamie Arnold. He's 5-0 and with a 052 ERA, 137 Sierra. Um, 
because this is U of L's best pitcher, I'm not looking to fade the uh, fade him here with Florida State. However, I would love an under. So when when the totals come out, I would be on the under here. Louisville, Florida State. I'm going to write that down in my book. Um, we move on to uh, six o'clock Eastern as well. Virginia at Duke. Uh, the Cavs are plus one twenty four on the money line. Duke is minus one sixty. The Blue Devils opened this thing up late in the game yesterday against the Hoos. Uh, I believe they won eight to three there. Um, starting for Virginia, it's Evan Blanco. He's a sophomore left-hander. I think he's their best starting pitcher on the squad this year. He's 2-1 and one with a 3.77 ERA, 32 strikeouts, 8 walks, and 28.2 innings with a 3.14 Sierra. Uh, going for Duke is Ryan Higgins, a junior right-hander, second start this season that he's making here. He's got a 3.24 ERA, 16 strikeouts, 10 walks, and 16.2 innings with a 4.21 Sierra. I mean, by this time, we know the deal with Duke. Um, they're going to be flipping in pitchers after one time through the batting order uh typically with the way they like to use their bullpen um but with my opinion here it, it's it's hard to keep the uva bats down they had five hits uh four run or they had five hits four runs on thursday i think this could be a bounce back day for uva um plus money here would be the pick with virginia um Six o'clock as well in the ACC. Boston College plus two hundred on the money line against Georgia Tech minus two seventy. I'm not going to go too deep into this one. I I, I know that AJ Colorusso is pitching for BC. He's got a five ninety three ERA. I personally like Aiden Finitary the best in that Georgia Tech rotation. So I would side with Georgia Tech here. Um, they're coming off of a pretty bad loss in game one to Boston College. Um, and that's usually the day that you back BC because John West, and then you don't know what else you're getting out of that pitching uh, pitching staff. Um, but Aiden Finitary with Georgia Tech and their offense, I think I like that one. However, slow start game one. I'm a little, a little hesitant to pull the trigger. I'm not going to. Um, six o'clock in the Big Twelve. Texas Tech minus one hundred and fifteen on the money line. UCF minus one hundred and fifteen on the money line. Uh, UCF walked off game one. Um, it was a walk off hit by pitch. They won five four. Kyle Robinson's getting the start here for Texas Tech, uh, junior right handed pitcher. Um, you know he had been moved back in the rotation for in favor of Mac Hoyer. I didn't agree with that decision. I know I listened to a couple of shows uh, that give out college baseball gambling picks, and they agreed with it. Um, that's one thing that I'll disagree with them. I, I think I listened to a couple of buddies of mine in the space, and I think they all do great work, but um, I'm never really going to be in favor of a freshman jumping an experienced starter in conference. Um, it, unless he's like pure dominating the competition, which Hoyer is not. Um, Robinson is a junior right-handed pitcher, three and two, four sixty-five ERA, thirty-six strikeouts, thirteen walks, and thirty-one innings with a three twenty-eight Sierra. That is a very solid line. Uh, very solid line. The only reason why I think Tadlock would even try to move up uh, Hoyer in here is that if he wanted to keep Robinson going on six days rest, going Fridays, um, I would look forward to seeing Robinson starting next Friday. Starting for UCF is Dom Stagliano. He's another junior right-hander. He's 1-1 one one with a 363 ERA, 20 strikeouts, 9 walks, and 22.1 innings. He's got a 402 Sierra. Uh, both of these teams that combined only for 9 runs in Game 1, I would look for these starters to keep the offenses low-scoring once again. Um, if we had a first 5-under, that would be my play. However, in college baseball, not yet. Thankfully for cut, which we'll talk about in a little bit. We're going to change that starting next week. Um, however, for for this game, I would go with UCF. They've, they've been winning home games in the Big 12 this year. Um, I'm thinking Oklahoma State, uh, game one against Texas Tech. Um, they're top 10 right now in the RPI for a reason. So give me the Knights to win that one. Um, one more game before we hit an ad read. This one's at 6.30, so we'll, we'll do the ad right before the 7 o'clock games. 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Mississippi State plus 154 at the Swamp at Contract Family Ballpark against Florida minus 200. I disagree with the price uh, right right away. Disagree with it um, mainly because there was a big 
shuffle in both of these schools starting rotations for this weekend. Uh, Cal Steven, the Purdue transfer, is getting the nod here in game one for Mississippi State. He's a junior right-hander. He's been pitching really good, 3-2 and two with a uh, 420 ERA, 32 strikeouts, 8 walks, and 30 innings with a 3 Sierra. Um, and for Florida, the closer, Brandon Neely, is getting the ball in game one. Um, voiced his opinion in the offseason that he'd like to be the starting pitcher. He kind of got uh, overruled by Soli or just beat out by the for the job by uh, both Fisher and Peterson. However, he's getting the nod here. Uh, he's 1-0 this year with a 450 ERA. He's made 11 appearances, only one, or this is going to be his first start of the year. Only 16 pit, uh, 16 innings pitched, 27 strikeouts, 8 walks with a 202 Sierra. He really, most of that line, uh, what negatives you can draw for it, was one bad appearance against St. Mary's. I'll say that. Um, otherwise, he's been pretty good. He led the SEC in saves last year. Uh, pretty steady. You know what you're getting from Neely. However, I'm uh, appealed a little bit by the powerful offense of the Bulldogs and also Steven on the mound in game one against the guy that's making his first start of the season. So I like the Bulldogs here, plus 154. That is going to be on the card for tomorrow. Um, before we get to the 7 o'clock slate, let me talk to you about Cut because they are a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's us based and available in 40 states right now uh, player to player social betting is a new and better way to bet you can bet directly against your friends or other users on sports politics pop culture and other events with verifiable outcomes plus tons of fun social features that give it the feel of a betting social network cut offers lower vig and fully customizable odds where you can create your own bets and that's where i'm telling you here now that the college baseball experience will be creating our own slate of college baseball games that we're offering. And it will start next week. Uh, currently the idea is that we're of course going to offer money lines. We're not really expecting to get a ton of action on money lines, but my idea here is we're offering first fives, both totals and money lines. We're offering offering, uh, um, we're offering pitcher strikeout totals. We're offering, uh, some home run props uh, again, mostly on like the star notable players, um, and offering like top 25 matchups for those markets that aren't normally offered on other legalized gambling, uh, sports books. So, um, with the, with the cut platform, we're allowed to kind of offer markets that aren't usually offered and you're betting against other users you're not betting against the book like there's there's no juice being taken out of these bets and going to the book like you are getting fair odds against another another better with a different opinion on the game so there's a couple of markets uh the first fives in the pitcher uh, the player props are not the only things that we're thinking of here um they will be available early on in the week prior to the weekend uh games so oh we're offering series money lines so you can bet on the team that's going to win two of three which we have been begging for forever so yeah i mean cut is a wonderful platform you can download it today over at cut kutt.com or you can download it in the app store it's uh kutt and use promo code sgpn for a 10 percent deposit bonus and also, we're brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. It's the easiest play to, place to play fantasy sports. Um, also, the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Uh, you can pick your favorite players, whether they'll have a higher or lower stat total in this week's uh, event for a chance to win big. You can win up to 100 times your money in a single night. Uh, pick between two and six players to build a pick em entry. Uh, and you can also make rivals picks, which pits two players against each other. Uh, like which player will have more total bases in a, in a MLB game. So sign up today with promo code TC SGPN and get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pick em special visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with the promo code TCE SGPN to get first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pick em special. You must be 18 plus and present present in a state where underdog fantasy operates terms apply concerned with your play. Call 1-800-522-4700.
4700 or visit www.npcgambling.org. All righty. Uh, back to the seven o'clock slate. Uh, Javante on Twitter, he goes, is this live? Yes. I'm the only insane person co- talking college baseball at four 20 in the morning right now. Uh, and Lane Elliott goes only real ones here are at night right now. Um, and Justin Casey also comments in right away now too. Uh, yes, this show is live guys. Uh, I will have it out, uh, audio is ASAP <laughs> once I finish. And then I'll write the description very lazily. Sorry, Sean Green. Um, I just got to get it up ASAP so people can download it for their Friday drives, you know. Um, all right, 6.30. Sorry, I skipped one 6.30 game. Uh, it is more like a, a parlay it or stay away game. Georgia plus 175 against Tennessee, minus 230. Uh, starting for Georgia is Charlie Goldstein. Starting for Tennessee is A.J. Causey. I'm on the Vols here. Um, I don't think it's the, as simple as to just say I, I'm on the Vols and parlay it. I'm personally not going to parlay this one just because we don't really know what Georgia we're getting. Uh, like, they have been up and down in SEC play so far. I'm looking at my cheat sheet on the left here, uh, taped to my desk. They lost that series to Kentucky in a very, very ugly fashion. Um, and then when I was in Vegas, they swept Alabama. So just uh, two polar opposite kind of results. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait to to see at least game one with what we're getting with Georgia against a, a, another very solid SEC starter. Um, and if it's bad, we're probably betting the Vols with Drew Beam. If it's good, then we're probably going to wait them out the entire weekend. Um, Javante in Twitter, he goes, "No, I love it when I do my capping. Uh, probably just a live show. He probably loves." especially on the weekends when games start at noon because I usually sleep till 6 or 8 p.m. I feel that. I sleep in quite a bit too. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit of an issue for me. Um, but uh, with Missouri Vandy, that's the next one here. Missouri's plus 310, Vanderbilt minus 445. Um, Vanderbilt started Grayson Carter um, against Mizzou here. Where did I write this one down? Or uh, yeah, so they're so uh, they're starting Grayson Carter. He's got a six twenty three ERA, ugly black eye, um, but they're also another one of these teams that's completely bounced around their weekend rotation uh, for Easter here. Um, Missouri's starting Carter Rusted, who's not Javen Pimentel, who's the only one that I will ever try to back with Missouri here. However. Carter is not a guy I'm looking to back with Vandy either. This would be an overplay, if anything. Um, so I'm going to write that down, and we'll move on here. Um, I, I would not even consider Vandy minus 445, and I don't have the balls to put it on plus 310 with Rustad and Missouri, the way they've looked so far this season. Um, the next one is Lamar and Oklahoma. Where did I write so DraftKings must have updated this order because I wrote them down in order of the way I was looking at them. Um, and that's what's screwed me up. That's why I skipped the Georgia Tennessee game too, but Lamar's plus two forty on the money line. They won game one against Oklahoma here. Uh, the Sooners are minus three thirty. Um, impressive by Lamar uh, tip my cap to them. However, I think they poked the bear. Uh, you caught Oklahoma sleeping in game one. Uh, this Lamar team hadn't really beaten anybody uh, top high major caliber up until that game. And they beat Brennan Gurton, who, in my opinion, is not Oklahoma's number one pitcher. There's a couple of these rotations that gave the nod to their uh, experienced starter returning for another year. Whereas Braden Davis, I think, has won that Friday night job for the Sooners. Um, it's only a matter of time when I think he gets it. He's a junior left-hander with two and one record, 390 ERA, 40 strikeouts, only 13 walks in 30 innings with a 263 Sierra. Now take this stat line and do uh, uh, consideration that it wasn't against very great competition for Brooks Capel of Lamar. However, 
He's been pretty good. He's got a three and two record, 142 a year array, 46 strikeouts, only six walks in 38 innings, a 189 Sierra. Um, not good at bet Oklahoma at plus, at minus 330. However, I don't think Lamar is a play at plus 240 for uh just my opinion i think i think it's the sucker play that you're going that you're going to double down on lamar who beat ou on friday um at a price that's not as juicy as it was on thursday um i would stay away from lamar but also just not betting ou here um the next game is houston tcu this one's also on the damn they switched around the entire thing on me uh houston plus 200 TCU minus 270. Um, this is being played at Lupton. Um, this would be a TCU parlay piece or nothing here. Uh, Houston starting Kyle Lacal. Damn, I even practiced this name before I get before I went. Kyle Lacalamento. Lacalamento. He's a grad senior with a left uh, grad senior left hander. Uh, 338 ERA. array. And Peyton Tolley has been dominant. He's going this game for TCU. They did not move him off the Friday uh, start. Uh, he's a junior left-hander, 373 ERA. Uh, he's been dominant lately. Like his last two starts, again, I was in Vegas, did not watch his last one. But from what I know, it was like, I think he went nine complete game shutty. Um, so, yeah, not fading him. TCU crushed Houston game one. Uh, you know, they've had an ugly, ugly start to the Big 12 conference season. Uh, they need the series bad and they probably need to sweep it. Uh, so I think I honestly think they will. Uh, so give me the frogs there. Um, the next game on DraftKings is Maryland at Michigan. Um, is that on this page or is that on my last page? It's this page. All right. Uh, Maryland, the Terps, they're minus 150 on the money line uh, at Fisher Stadium, plus 120 for the home team, the Wolverines. And I would be looking to fade the Wolverines here. <laughs> Kenny Lipman's going for the Terps here. He's a grad right-hander, uh, one and two record with a 4.44 ERA, 25 strikeouts, 16 walks, and 26.1 innings with a 4.56 ERA or 4.56 Sierra. I apologize. Um, and I'm projecting that Dylan Vigu, our stud freshman, is starting for Michigan. Freshman right-hander. He's 0-2 with a 6.20 ERA, 21 strikeouts, 25 walks. Uh, in 24.2 innings, he's got a 774 Sierra. Um, Michigan's also coming off their first series win of the year. Uh, this is just a big letdown spot against the Maryland team that's been there, done that, and they're facing a freshman with a grad senior on the mound. Terps all day. Terps lock it up. Um, so, yeah, that's a bet for me uh, on Maryland, and we'll move on. Nathan Serna, he goes, no, it be with the critical intel. <laughs> Shout out to Serna. Uh, always in the TC chats, uh, loyal listener. Um, big, big game here. Uh, just for, I don't, I don't, I don't know why big, I love clubs in this year. I've made it known that I love the Tigers this year. I backed them on Thursday. Miami hit a walk off. They had that Mark light magic. Clemson's coming back here on Friday, favored by a little bit less, only minus 130 on the money line. Miami, plus 100. Um, where did I write this game at? Ethan Darden, last year's Friday night starter for Clemson, is starting here today uh, for game two. He's 4-0 this year with a 5.09 ERA, 16 strikeouts, six walks, and 17.2 innings with a 2.71 ERA. He's not been starting games this year. He's been coming out of the pen. Um, starting for Miami is Rafe Schlesinger, who I think is their best starting pitcher this year. And um, what's the guy's name? Uh, Gage Zeal just threw nine complete game. Uh, 15 strikeouts <laughs> against Clemson, and he's the one that I like to fade. Um, he had an out of body experience <laughs> against Clemson, so 
I don't think you can hold this Clemson lineup down for long, but also Miami only scored three runs that game too. So I think this game is bound to have a little bit more scoring. I actually favor Miami in this one. I think the plus uh, 100 price is pretty nice with the Canes because Schlesinger has been their best starter this season so far. He's 2-1 and one with a 419 ERA, 36 strikeouts, 10 walks, and 34.1 innings, 303 Sierra. My my pick here would be Miami. However, um, Clemson is just going to play close games. That's just how they've been winning uh, games so far this season. So uh, I'll side with the Canes. I'm not going to bet it. Uh, not going to fade my guy, Eric Backage. That's for sure. All right, now for the big, big game. Flip back over to this page. It's LSU and Arkansas. Um, and this is the one where, you know, uh, Jay Johnson played some 3D chess uh, against Dave Van Horn. Um, he's starting Luke Holman in game two here. And also DVH moved up Mason Molina from game three to game two. Um, so it's a Luke Holman, Mason Molina matchup, uh, where, you know, if, if it was traditionally the way it's gone this season, it would have been gauge jump against, uh, Brady Tiger. However, like I said, Luke Holman, Mason Molina, Holman, Junior right-hander, I mean, he's been outstanding this year. 5-1 and one with a 0 ERA, 56 strikeouts, 8 walks, and 34.2 innings with a 104 Sierra. He's been borderline unhittable. Starting for Arkansas is Mason Molina, also a junior, but he's a left-hander. 3-0 and with a 2 257 ERA, 47 strikeouts, 15 walks, and 28 innings with a 187 Sierra. However, in recent form, he has not. He's struggled to throw consistent strikes. Um, uh, LSU's favored somehow in this game, minus 150. The Hogs are plus 120. Uh, hell no, no way. Um, personally, uh, the Tigers they were in that game for about five or six innings in game one on Thursday. They exhausted a lot of bullpen options. Um, I, I don't have them winning this game. You would need Holman to throw eight and then out of, out of the pen, bring out some of your best again. I don't see it happening. I don't understand why the Tigers are favored here. I'll take Arkansas at home. Uh, we know how tough it is to win on the road in college sports, let alone in the SEC for the greatest regular season in sports. Um, Arkansas on the money line. That's the pick. Um, I think there's better games that you can bet. However, I, I mean, if if you were only if you were dead set on just watching the best game of the day, I would put money on Arkansas. However, I'm watching tomorrow Sweet 16. I'm watching Frozen Four. Um, you know, I, I, I have bets in other places as well. So yes, I am spreading it around a little bit more than just two plays today. However, uh, this is not going to be a bet for myself. Uh, then we move to Troy at Southern Miss. Troy is plus 130, Southern Miss minus 166 on the money line. And the Golden Eagles smashed Troy in game one here. Um, where where am I at? Uh, so, yeah, they, they smashed Troy in game one. They're, they've been automatic at Pete Taylor Park so far this season. Um Billy Oldham on the mound. He's 3 0 this year with a 262 ERA. He's a senior right hander, 36 strikeouts, 11 walks, and 34.1 innings, 326 Sierra. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fade him, especially with Garrett Gaines on the mound uh for Troy, red shirt junior, um, one and one, 397 ERA, 17 strikeouts, nine walks, eleven point one innings, three sixty-two Sierra. There's just more of a sample size behind Oldham and He's been pretty consistent for Southern Miss over the years. Um, for this game, I'm on. I'm on Southern Miss. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think if I'd be willing to. I'm going to look something up here. I have um, some hitting team stats that I'm relying on because I'm going off of kind of memory of how these teams have played so far this season because I did not watch last weekend um, Southern Miss and Troy. I'm not going to lay it with Tro- uh, Southern Miss. Troy's offense has been significantly better than the Golden Eagles so far this season. Um, 
but no, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play this one. Um, also, another really fun Sun Belt game here: Louisiana at Texas State. Bobcats are minus one fifty. Raging Cajuns plus one twenty. Louisiana kind of stole game one from Texas State. I like Texas State in the bounce back here, but also, uh, I mean, I like it here because. U of L, they're starting a freshman left-hander on the road. Chase Morgan, he's one and one with a 2.22 ERA. Um, this he's only made four starts so far this year. He's made ten appearances out of the pen. 2.22 ERA, 23 strikeouts, seven walks, and 24.1 innings. 3.33 Sierra. Starting for Texas State, Sam Hall. I've been pretty impressed with him so far this year. Sophomore right-hander, one and one, 304 ERA, 20 strikeouts, seven walks, and 26.2 innings with a four Sierra. Um, Texas State's offense is a little bit better than Louisiana's 112 WRC plus compared to a, a little bit below average in the Raging Cajuns case at 98. Um, you know, it, I think it was just a case of a nice game one starter for Louisiana. Bounce back here at home for Texas State in game two. Uh, I like the Bobcats to win this. Frank goes, um, how can he possibly know all of this? Well, I, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I did a little bit of research before the game, but, I mean, I like to watch college sports in general because he asks, wait, wait, these guys do college baseball too. I'm going to need to take out a loan. Um, some of these players will go to the pros and disappear for the few years. That's the only downside about college baseball transitioning to the pros. 100%. Um, but I do like that. Uh, not a lot, like not a lot of uh, MLB fans pay attention to college baseball for some reason. I, I don't know what it is, but in my opinion, it's, it's a more fun product. Uh, there's higher scoring games, but also you get the dominant pitching matchups for some of the guys because, I mean, some Friday night starters just mow down some of these amateur baseball lineups. And also you get amateur baseball players in the field. There's there's more airs. It's just more exciting, uh, more fun brand of baseball to watch. And the, the fans, uh, they're more compact in one area, less than 15,000 at every stadium, but they're, they're still loud because they're pretty damn close to the field. They're rowdy compared to MLB crowds. Uh, I compare most of the college baseball crowds to the way that the Oakland athletics fan bases crowds used to be compared to the last five years. Fuck John Fisher. I could go on about that for quite a bit. Um, I got to pick this up a little bit though. I'm going a little bit longer than I'd like. Uh, Seven 30 start time here. Kentucky at Ole Miss. The cats are plus plus one ten. The Rebs are minus minus one fifty. Um, starting this game, this is game one of the weekend series here between these two teams. Trey Poozer is getting the nod for Kentucky grad right hand, our grad senior right handed pitcher, one and oh, with a 372 year, right? 22 strikeouts, seven walks, and 19.1 innings, 312 Sierra. Uh, I don't know what happened to Travis Smith. Um, again, in Vegas last week, didn't pay a ton of attention. Starting for Gun uh, for Ole Miss is Gunner Dennis. He's a junior left-hander, three and one. He's got a seven twenty-four ERA, thirty-four strikeouts, thirteen walks, and twenty-seven point one innings. Three forty-two Sierra though. So you look under the hood. He's been a little bit better than kind of his line indicates. Uh, indicates he had a blow-up outing at Tennessee last week. He's pitched pretty well at home. I like the bounce back angle here with him and Poozer making his second start of the year, uh, coming off of a good first start of the year against Missouri of all teams. So like, I'm not going to put a ton of stock into Poozer yet. I need to see him against the team like Ole Miss to know how he's going to handle SEC plays. So I like Ole Miss here on the money line. Um, also 730 start. Uh, last game before we hit that second ad, let's talk about Cincy at Baylor. Cincy, <laughs> what? They're getting plus money here against Baylor. Again, I think. I think they were catching plus money yesterday, too. Uh, the Bearcats, plus 105. Baylor, the Bears, are minus 135. Uh, Cincy pulled away early against Baylor, and that that one was uh, no contest. 8-3 to three final. Uh, the Bears, they had only one less hit, but two bad errors in that contest. 
Um, Cincinnati starting Tommy Boba here, sophomore right-hander, two and two with a 621 ERA, 26 strikeouts, eight walks, 29 innings pitched, 367 Sierra. Starting for Baylor's Mason Marriott, junior right-hander. He's 0 3 on the year with a 450 ERA, 33 strikeouts, 14 walks in 30 innings with a 364 Sierra. In my opinion, I think this is going to be a low scoring stay away game for me, uh, just because. The two offenses have been pretty inconsistent. I don't know what I'm going to get. Uh, before we move on to the later slate, I need to talk to you about Manscaped. I got to take a big breath for this one before I go. But I mean, say goodbye to your Clover Forest with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and let your confidence shine bright. Embrace the luck of the Irish and join 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. Head over to manscaped.com and use code SGPN for 20% off plus free shipping. Um, Trimming the hedges in your Irish garden isn't just for below the belt. Complete your look with Manscaped Signature Beard Hedger Pro Kit Plus Handyman Electric Face Shaver. Whether you're sculpting your beard or cleaning up your neckline, these are always the right tools for the job. Get 20% off and free shipping with code SGPN at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with code SGPN at manscaped.com. This is... Uh, Easter, make sure you're a little hilarious. This is this is uh, this ad write up is r- written for St. Patrick's Day, but you know, this this Easter, make sure your uh, Easter egg patch is uh, groomed better than ever with Manscaped. There we go. <laughs> I went a little bit of a uh, what do you improv it there? Um, Win bigger by betting smarter with uh, Hall of Fame bets this NBA and MLB season. Sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research every NBA, MLB, and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Enter any parlay idea into the Hall of Fame bets revolutionary parlay optimizer tool to get hit rates broken down by leg as well as an expected probability for the entire parlay. Sort all players by hit rate for any bet to learn which players are hot and which picks have value. Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame bets to craft more intelligent, data-driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame bets app or visit hofbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame bets. All right, we're back here on the college baseball experience. Lane Elliott goes at Frank. Yes, sir. No knows college baseball between him and D1 baseball. You can get some really good info. I agree with that, Lane, for sure. Uh, D1 baseball, highly recommend it. Um, honestly, recommend it over anything else that you'll find, even me. Uh, everything that I'm grabbing is also pretty much from D1. Uh, a little bit of Friday starters, though. Friday starters is an up and coming. I don't even know what they're going to turn into, but holy shit, they're doing great work over there. Um, But yeah, I mean, jumping back into the games, we're jumping to the 8 o'clock p.m. slate here on the Eastern time zone. Notre Dame plus 175 at NC State minus 230. This is a parlay or nothing here. Where did I write this one? Uh, Starting for Notre Dame is Jack Raddell, freshman right-hander, 310 ERA, 510 Sierra. You look under the hood, stats are a little bit less impressive than how they've been. He's hitting the road here in ACC play. This is a definite fade. Uh, Logan Whitaker has not been outstanding so far this year. He's been better in years past, um, but an experienced arm in the ACC. 514 ERA, 399 Sierra here. NC State would be a parley piece, in my opinion. Uh, we go to South Carolina at Alabama. The Cox are plus 110 in Tuscaloosa against the Tide, minus 140. Starting for South Carolina is Dylan Eskew. He's a junior right-hander, 2-2 two and two with a 381 ERA, 20 strikeouts, 8 walks, and 26 innings with a 386 Sierra. Going for Bama is Ben Hess. Now, this is a guy that I've truly loved over the last year and a half. However, his last three starts have not been typical form. Um, I don't know what's up, whether it's like an injury barking uh, soon to be down the road or uh, just a couple of bad, out- bad outings in a row here. He's faced um, 
Georgia and Tennessee so far this season, both very good offenses in the SEC. Um, so that could, that could explain a little bit of it. But he's 3-0, and 5-11 uh, ERA. Like I said, those last three starts are the ones that are haunting him a little bit because he's got 40 strikeouts and 24.2 innings. He's only got 12 walks. He's throwing strikes. He's got a 205 Sierra. But the confusing thing is here's two of the best uh, – advanced analytics stats for a pitcher um he's got 6.1 fit he's got a 205 sierra in my opinion for college baseball i prefer sierra because most college baseball pitchers aren't as dominant they don't rely on the strikeout as much as they do keeping the ball in play soft contact on on the ground whether it's in the ground or in the air fit only really accounts for the home run um and strikeout walk it's it, it's fielder independent pitching everybody knows what that is kind of at this point however hess is a strikeout dominant pitcher so the the fit would actually fit him a little bit better um and it's a 6.1 so again it's it's tough to read hess on what's been going on so far uh thursday it, it was an easy it was an easy play just situationally um i should have bet it honestly i only played two games um, but Thursday was the back against the wall game for Alabama. They bounce back. They win that first game after getting swept by Georgia and South Carolina coming off the weekend sweep of Vanderbilt. It was a letdown spot. Um, game two. I, I think you could talk yourself in the either side here. I'm going to go with South Carolina. Just, I think it's a coin flip game plus money. Uh, South Carolina built really good momentum last weekend against Vanderbilt. I think they could take one game here. If I were to bet money on the game they take, I would say it's the game that Roman Kimball pitches. But picking this game here, I don't know. I, damn, I'm gonna I'm gonna take my guy Hess. I, I know I just said I like the the plus money on the on the coin flip. This is this is a tough one. Um, I'll side with Alabama, uh, the home team in the SEC series. That one's really tough. Um, the last eight o'clock game on the slate here, Kansas minus 150 on the money line, BYU plus 120. Shout out to the Jayhawks, they were my one victory for Thursday. I'm gonna go right back to them minus 150 on the money line. Like I said, Dominic uh, Vogeli, Vo, Vogeli, Vogeli, uh, Dominic Vogeli, he's a freshman right hander. Uh, two and one on the year, 197 ERA, 29 strikeouts, 12 walks, and 32 innings with a 393 Sierra. BYU, Bryce Robinson starting here. He's our senior right hander, two and one, 358 ERA, 25 strikeouts, six walks, and 27.2 innings with a three, 348 Sierra. I'm not personally betting this, but I am on Kansas' side here. Uh, there's two ways that you could paint this whether you're going to fade the freshman on the road or you're going to back the better offense with a pitcher who's been pretty solid, but he's a freshman on the road. That's the side that I'm going to take. Um, however, I could, I could totally see why one would take BYU here. Uh, we got a couple more games here that are going to take place on the West coast. Um, just a handful more uh, nine 30. It is Cal at Arizona state. The Bears are minus 145. The Sun Devils plus 114. Sign me up as this is a price that doesn't make sense to me. Um, Arizona State is starting Connor Markle. He's a senior left-hander, transfer from Grand Canyon. He's been great this year, 1-1 one one with a 426 ERA, 29 strikeouts, 9 walks in 25.1 innings. He's got a 427 fit compared to freshman Trey Newman uh, here. He's got a 776 fit. He's a... Like I said, freshman right-hander, 0-2 on the year, 6.75 ERA, 21 strikeouts, 12 walks, and 22.2 innings. Uh, he just doesn't go deep in the games. Uh, that's the main knock on Newman. Um, whenever I've faded him, I've lost, but this is a spot that I really like Arizona State. They're the home team here. It's a launch pad. It favors their more explosive offense. At plus money, give me that all day. Um, they won game one 14 to eight. Uh, that was a spot that I, you, you know, didn't absolutely love with Thomas Burns on the mound for Arizona State. He also another freshman. Um, however, uh, he got rocked and the Arizona State's offense made up for it late. Um, so yeah, I'm on the Sun Devils here. Uh, the next game on the slate is UCLA against Arizona. 
Bruins are plus 145 at the Wildcats, minus 190. Uh, starting for UCLA's Michael Barnett, sophomore right-hander. He's 2-1 and one with a 540 ERA, 19 strikeouts, 9 walks, and 28.1 innings with a three uh, with a 4.6 Sierra. Um, I'm on Arizona here. Uh, I think this is a great parlay piece. Clark Candiotti is starting here. He's the Wichita State transfer. He's a senior right-hander. He's 1-1 one and one with 382 ERA, 39 strikeouts, 10 walks in 33 innings with a 271 Sierra. So you look under the hood, he's even better than what his kind of face value stats are. Um, love Clark, uh, love Clark Candiotti. Honestly, I thought he was going to be the ace coming into the year, but Jackson Kent's been great too. So uh, Arizona's got a really nice one-two punch out there in the desert launch pad. Uh, I like the Cats. I like the Wildcats a lot. I was on them kind of in the preseason of being a surprise team. Right now, they're kind of a contender. Um, so, yeah, I love Arizona here. Uh, the next game, ooh, on, on Thursday, this one was a little bit of a stumper. It was a low-scoring game between Oregon State and USC, and USC pulled off the W against the Beavs. Um, the Trojans are plus 240 once again. Beavers minus 330. Uh, that's because Jacob Kmatz is starting. He's 3-0 and on the year with a 208 ERA, 309 Sierra. He's been very, very consistent in his starts. Um, he's going up against Jared Fikes, uh, which USC kind of jumbled mess in the starting rotation. Um, the, he's a grad uh, grad senior, right-handed pitcher, 450 ERA. However, like I said, whether it's injuries or uh, just guys that haven't performed so far this year that has caused that jumbled mess, um, the USC is the fade for me um, in this game. So I'll take the Beavers here. Two games left. Wazoo murdered uh, Washington State. Uh, I don't know about murdered. Scratch that. I think it was four nothing. Now that I recall, but Grant Taylor murdered Washington's lineup. I should say that um, the Cougs minus one thirty five on the money line. Washington plus one oh five. Starting for Wazoo is Connor Wilford. He's a senior right hander, three and one with a four fourteen ERA, twenty five strikeouts, eleven walks, and thirty seven innings with a four forty four Sierra. Um, and for Washington, it's Calvin Kirchhoff, another senior right-hander. He's one and one with a 596 ERA, 79 or 17 strikeouts, 12 walks in 25.2 innings with a 521 Sierra. Uh, my side here is Washington State. They've been the better team so far this season. Um, you're not laying too much juice with the Cougs here on the road in the Apple Cup on the Diamond. Uh, maybe one of the last times we see it. I don't know if they've renewed that rivalry yet. Uh, give me Washington State to win the series in game two here. Uh, last game on the slate, it is UC Irvine on the island. The Ant Eaters are minus 150 on the money line, Hawaii plus 120. They won game one, UC Irvine did. Uh, here in game two, Randy Abshire on the mound against a freshman right-hander. Granted, Tra Trevor Hansen for UCI, he is the freshman. He's had a good season so far. He's 3 and 0 with a 4.40 ERA, 27 strikeouts, 10 walks and in 28.2 innings with a 3.78 ERA, but Abshire on the island with plus money is the side that I'm looking to play here. Um, he's a grad senior left-hander, 1 and 1 with a 4.45 ERA, 42 strikeouts, 8 walks and in 30.1 innings with a 198 Sierra. Whenever he's been on the mound, he has kept the bows in the game. If Hawaii is going to take one of these games, I think UC Irvine takes the series. But if Hawaii takes one game, I think it's here, game two, with Abshear on the mound. Give me the bows uh, at plus 120. I'm going to bet that one, write it down. And now let's go over them all um, and also build a parlay for the show. Um, so I like Virginia Tech for the parlay. I like uh, – Arizona for the parlay, and that is going to be the parlay. Those were the two favorite pieces that I had. Let's run the updated number, uh, refresh on the page. So, ironically, Virginia Tech's the earliest game of the day that they're offering so far, and Arizona is taking place at 10 p.m. Eastern, so we're going to have to wait this one out, but it's a plus 101. That's great. Uh, perfect. Plus 101. For that parlay, Virginia, Virginia Tech on the money line, Arizona on the money line. Um, the straights that I'm going to play for today are Maryland minus 150 on the money line against Michigan. Um, I'm also going to play 
I'm looking at all the ones that I circled. Uh, Arizona State plus 114 on the money line. Hawaii plus 120 on the money line. Did I not circle all the ones that I said I was going to bet? Damn it. Um, Scanning over them quickly here uh, before we get out of here. Mississippi State plus 154, game one against Florida with Cal Steven on the mound against Brandon Neely in his first start in the SEC. Um. Kansas, I like Kansas, but I'm not betting on the freshman. Um, again, high elevation too. I don't even know if I mentioned that, but that's the one reason why, I, or one of the reasons why uh, I like Kansas in that game with Vogley going, uh, and they've got the better offense. But I said, uh, like I, I think I said this earlier, you could paint that one two different ways. You could fade the freshman on the road at elevation. Um, but also I, I think Kansas has a better offense. So that's the reason why I'm taking the Hawks. Um, but I, I loved that Reese Dutton spot on Thursday and I wrote that one up as my favorite play. Um, so yeah, I'm scanning the page one last time. Uh, I was close to pulling the trigger on that Southern Miss game too. Uh, I think if you're looking for another favorite Southern Miss wouldn't be bad. Um, so yeah, so that, that is, that is the card for me. Um, things that I want to plug here real quick. The college baseball picks page is up and running on sports gambling podcast.com. Uh, you go to, go to the main website, then go to, I think it's under the MLB tab. Then you can find college baseball picks there. College baseball doesn't have its own tab right now. It's just the, the way it is uh, from my memory. The last time I checked out the website, I don't think we've got our main, I don't think we've got our own tab um, yet on the website, but uh, I am putting out money lines, run lines and totals for every game that is offered on legal sports betting websites. Um, if it's, if there's a lock next to it, that means that I've, played it with my own money if that makes sense hopefully it does um there's like a little lock icon it's pretty self-explanatory those are the ones that i've bet um but you can see for free i mean it takes two minutes uh if you don't have a full hour to listen to the show uh you can check out that page um and go game by game just my opinions most of the time uh, on those i i put a little bit less time into making those picks uh, than I do for the show. Um, basically, I'm kind of breezing through them. Um, and if I like a game, then I look more further into it. Uh, and that's when I bet that game, if that makes sense. Just because there's so many games, I want to put my opinions out there. Um, but th the locks are what you're looking for. There's a lock icon there. Um, also, you can follow me on Twitter at Noah B 77 underscore. I assume most of you kind of already do. If you're listening on good Friday, um, again, elite eight, uh, show will be Friday night for college basketball experience. I will be on that show as well with Moneyline Mac and Colby. Uh, I think that's it. Check out the MLB gambling podcast. If that's your thing, if you're looking for more baseball bets, uh, those guys do a really good job. Shout out to Malcolm. That's my guy. Um, and yeah, Colby is part of the UFL gambling podcast that season kicks off this weekend. Um, so yeah, check out those shows. Um, and yeah, I'll get out of here. So you've been listening to the college baseball experience. You better start thinking about yours. Adios. Amigos.